Hello, everybody. Literally starting this recording two seconds after I finished the last one. Um, we're back with Breakout. Today, we're starting on the crossroads. As I clear away the shiny white stone, I seem to arrive at a crossroads of sorts. Four windows and four walls reveal glimpses of what is behind them. I long to explore them all, to spread out and finally have space to work in. But the glass seems, if anything, harder than this new impenetrable shell. But I seem to have been given a gift. The label reads, Thea's Super Strong Awesome Power Pick, number one of four. Guarantee to break any block. Guarantee void after two uses. Ooh. Ooh. Has reached the crossroads. Which way will they choose? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's annoying. Where are we going? Um... What are we doing? Which one? Which way are we going? That's. So does that mean we have to choose one of these four, and we cannot do the other one until we're done with that section? Um. I don't know which one we want to do. Oh wow, I'm kind of really lost. Uh. I think thermal expansion is a good one, but the thing is, is that with thermal expansion, we have to have, like, we need ores and metal, and that would take a lot of work. Um, what is that? That's actually additions. I haven't done much with actually additions before. That's Batania, obviously, with the flower, and that one would be the only one left. What is that? What is the only one left? Ender IO? You know what? I think we might go for Batania, actually. Because it seems like that'd be fun to do. But at the same time, it's like, do I really want to do that? Or do I want to go to the one of the others? Oh, why did they do this to me? Ugh. Hmm. Boy, why did they do this to me? Why? I have to choose. I haven't played actually editions very much at all. Oh, it says, okay, to the west is a mysterious machine, a pinpoint of red light suggesting some sort of laser. Actually, additions gives you multiple ways to transform the materials you are, are already familiar with into new and powerful variations. Most of these changes take place in the world in front of your eyes instead of hidden inside the walls of a mysterious block. Okay. Looking into the room to the east, you see nothing. Well, nothing much. Perhaps yet another type of stone, which isn't exactly what you need. Or is it? Ender I.O. introduces a suite of machines and alloys that let you work with materials in new ways. Most spectacular are its conduits that let you move, sort, and power items and machines in powerful, yet compact ways. I mean, I know some of Ender I.O., not all of it. Um, Batania's great. There's a lovely green lawn beyond the south window, and you see a single flower gently glowing. Botania will introduce you to a more magical type of engineering that is powerful, but requires its own mystical energy. Turning north and peering through the glass, you see a simple machine, block, and a gear. Thermal expansion will introduce you to simple and versatile material processing and automation, as well as access to better power generation. Hmm, that's the question. That's the question. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? Uh... I think Batania. I really do. I think we're going for Batania. Um, we cannot break anything accidentally with this pick. Get it out of my inventory until... Okay. Um, now, why did I... 
That's annoying. Um, yeah. Impossible pickaxe. Here we go. We're doing it. Botania. Botania it is. Oh, ho, ho. we may have just made the worst decision of our life. Oh. oh, I don't know what that is. Um, okay. Uh, we need to fix the strainer thing. How far is that going to go? Oh, well, it'll give us a way back in. How about that? Where's the flower? The flower... No, no, no. Flower, flower, no. Okay, thank goodness. We've gone south. Um, okay, let's do this. Get back in there. That's going to be annoying. Yeah, we can't do that. Um, what can we put there, though, that'll stop it? Oh, I know. Um... We don't have one. Oh shoot. Well, let's make one. We have wood. Plenty of wood. Let's just make one. Okay. Um, we need some of you. Okay. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Oh man, it went down into the stinking strainer. How annoying. Pick you up so I can adjust. This is 1.12. We should be able to just place trapdoors anywhere, right? Yeah, nice. All right. There we go. Okay. Um don't do that yet. Um, Botania. Quest completed. South. Claim the Lexica Botania. Botania includes an in-game manual that will give you detailed information and even build guides for the mod. For Laurel Fertilizer. Okay. Um... Floral fertilizer. Okay, so it wants us to make. So what does that do? Oh, that's our ways through, I'm assuming. So we've activated it on this side. Now we have to activate it on the other side, I guess. Um, floral fertilizer. It wants us to use this to grow stuff, I'm assuming. Yeah. Ah, welcome to Batania. I congratulate you on the fine choice of strapping a sapling and a book together, or just finding this tome in a chest, whichever applies. Uh, neither, but anyway, you can navigate this book using the area arrows at the bottom of this page, your mouse wheel, or the arrow keys in your keyboard. Despite its looks, Batania is in essence a tech mod, by definition of requiring you to put, uh, to use ingenuity thought and redstone to create and progress. It's good to keep that in mind. Of course, you'll also be rewarded with cool toys, blocks, and equipment, if you're worried. For all intents and purposes, Botania is a mod for anybody who likes to play the game, with the primary purpose of building cool things. It is designed to be fully playable standalone, but is also playable with other mods. Excluding a couple cases, everything in the mod is fully automatable using only Minecraft and itself. If you happen to find yourself lost, try checking out the mod's advancements or challenges, both of which can be found on the left-hand side of this book's main page. 
The book is laid out in a friendly way with a good amount of handy features, so before you start jumping in and playing, take a bit of time to familiarize yourself with the, what, various, what the various tidbits around the place do. After this, you'll be taken to a page where you can optionally start a tutorial that will teach you the basics of the mod in around 10 minutes, give or take. However, it teaches you only the very basics, so after you have a good foothold on those concepts, further research is a good idea. If you're unsure as to what you want to learn about, hold shift while browsing through the various categories to get a quick idea of what each thing is. The lexicon index category can be very helpful for in searching, as it contains every entry in the book in one place. And that's it for, the int for this introduction. You can move on to the tutorial now. I hope you enjoy playing with Botania as m much as I enjoyed making it. Vazki, the mod author. Carry on by pressing the back button on the bottom. On the bottom, Your right mouse button or backspace key will have the same effect. While one could just go through the various entries in the book at their leisure, there is also a tutorial of sorts available. Clicking the buttons below will guide you through the basic concepts of Batania. You can pick between an in-game guided tour of this book or a short-ish video. Um, we're going to go back for now. Because yeah, we can always go back to do this if we want. So um, first we're going to come in here, go back into our quest book, and see, it wants us to complete more proximity to these magical plant. Uh, seems to have turned some of the bone meal in my pockets into something else. I wonder what happens when I use it on grass. It wants us to get all of the flowers that we can get. Bam, bam, bam. Bam. Ba, 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 boom. Bam. Do, do, do. Bam. All right. What else do we need? Brown. And light gray. Burr, burr. Light gray. More flowers. You gotta love it. That should be what we need, right? No, I guess we have only gotten gray and not light gray yet. There's some light gray. Flower pouch. Oh, there's a flower pouch? I've been playing Botania all wrong this whole time. Holy... I had no idea. Um, we need some of that, so we're going to go ahead and keep doing this. We're going to use up the rest of our floral fertilizer to get ourselves some flowers, because they are the meat of Botania. There's some cyan, that's what I've been looking for. There we go, some more cyan. I think that's a regular torch. I, I was wondering if it was a redstone torch or something. Um, okay. Oh, it collected it into the flower pouch automatically. How wonderful. All right. Reproducing flowers. Invar shears and mystical red petal. The flowers I'm collecting seem random and rare, but... Fortunately, they can be grown using a single petal as a seed, bone meal to give them a burst of height, and shears to collect the large plant. Okay, okay. That's interesting, interesting. I didn't know you could do that. Bobbles, bangles, and beads. Ring of magnetization. Botania has any number of useful gadgets. No matter what you're doing, one of the most useful is this. Oh, we get a band of mana as reward. Okay, the ring of magnetization. How do we make a ring of magnetization? Ooh, mana steel. <laughs> okay, so it's basically saying this is where you need to get. Go here. So, um, 
Okay, this is the really the starting bit. This is just um, a side quest, I suppose. So let's we'll get to the reproducing flowers, because we definitely need that. So it wants us to make invar shears for whatever reason. What kind of shears do we have? I think we have aluminum shears. Yeah, uh, so we need to make invar shears instead. Um, which I'm sure we can use both of the shears. It's just, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know what? We want you to use invar, so you use invar, you know? Uh, so, okay, invar is iron and uh, tin, was it? Oh, nickel. Iron and nickel. Okay. Well, you know what? Why use that when we've got more iron in there and we can just get nickel down here? You know? We're only making two pieces anyway, so yeah. So, let's, um... Well, we only need one piece of nickel, really. <laughs> We're going to do that for now, just so that we have all the ones we need, and then we'll put the rest of it in there for later. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I just heard something. What was that? I thought it was something from down here, but I guess not. Huh. Oh well. Definitely wasn't anything out there. Well, y'all can um, let me know. If, if you don't like that I chose Batania, just let me know in the comments, you know, and I'll, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, hey, it, it's your decision if you, if you like it or not, so... But I like Botania, so I figured we we do some Botania, you know, it's just just to have some fun with it, right? Because at this point, we've pretty much gotten most of what we're trying to do here. The main goal is not to uh, keep, you know, doing all these different things. The main goal is to. Um, Right now is to finish Britannia, but, you know, okay. And we need mystical red petals. Okay, so we need to go get bone meal. Aren't we glad that we set our strainers back up to get more bone meal? <laughs> yes, we definitely are. Let's uh, organize that, and we're going to stick some more uh, bait in there. Ch -ch -ch -ch. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. So we can replicate flowers. That's really interesting. I didn't know that. Okay, mystical red flower. Bone meal it. Shears. Tall mystical red flower. Oh, and it gives us four instead of. Okay. So we still have to use the other stuff too. It's just that the tall ones will give us four pieces. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what it is. Oops, wrong. We do this. That's what it is. <laughs> okay, now I understand. Reproducing flowers. Completed. And we're going to take um, floral fertilizer because we don't need any more wheat seeds. That's for absolute sure. But we definitely need more of these things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
This is gonna be a fun time with Botania. So it looks like four is the maximum amount of flowers you can get from a floral fertilizer. Uh, it might be more, it's just uh, with this amount of grass, I guess, four is the maximum we can get. Alright. Pretty good flower pouch, if I do say so myself. And we still have that pure daisy as well. Um, all right, what's next? We want to make some living rock and living wood, the pure daisy that we have. It says, the shimmering white pure daisy surely is a wonder. It has magical effects on blocks placed around it. I've already seen wood and smooth stone affected. I wonder what else I could change. All right, so we're going to bring it inside as opposed to outside. We're going to set it right, well... Obviously, there's no dirt there, so we can't set it there. Um, I guess we're going to leave it outside then. Um, but we're going to grab some... It said 24. That's a lot, actually. I wish there was a way to speed this up. Can we... Huh. You can bone meal the bonsai pot. That's pretty cool. I didn't realize you could do that. Oh, well. Um, I don't, we don't really need to, but, um, now we need smooth stone as well. That's going to be kind of annoying. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so let's go stick this outside. Living wood. I love it. We'll have living wood. And uh, I know... So it just wants us to do that. I know we're going to need more pure daisies. And I know we're going to need to use the Petal Apothecary and stuff like that to make it. But um, because Petal Apothecary is a quest, I'm just going to stick to doing it this way with just the one pure daisy that we have. So yeah. Um, it'll work out all right. Okay, this one's going to be done first. That one next. That one next. That one next. Oh, I guess it was the other one first. Oh, okay. We got another egg. I guess we could go grab real quick. Dun, dun, dun. There goes our wood. Where did that stair come from? I don't know. Just toss it. Nothing. Okay. Well, um, we could theoretically continue to breed more animals. Um... Yeah, we may as well. Let's not go for the leather right now. We're just going to breed some animals here. You guys go ahead and get it on. And the two of you as well. Even though you're technically mother and child. But then again, here in Minecraft, there are no male chickens. <laughs> there are no roosters. They're all hens. Which I think is very weird that you can breed hens together. But, you know, it's a it's a video game. <laughs> um, I'm going to grab that for a second. There we go. We should have done that earlier, but we didn't. What happened to our buckets? Did we drop them in the strainers? That's annoying. We did, for whatever reason, somehow. I don't know. Um, 
I am wondering where I got this extra cobblestone steer from. Oh, I took it outside and I just had extra. Okay, that's fine. Um, regardless, we need to go back down through here to break this. Living wood. There we go. Okay, let's make another Pure Daisy because I'm getting tired of waiting. Pure Daisy. Pure Daisy is not only the most basic, but also the most important flower a botanist can have. This flower will purify any adjacent wood and stone blocks, as seen on the next page, into their purified counterparts, living wood and living rock, which can be used for crafting. Living wood can be turned into twigs. A few other blocks can also be purified by placing them around the flower. While not as unique and, and essential as the living blocks, perhaps this might come in handy. This includes netherrack into cobblestone, soul sand into sand, ice into packed ice, and water into snow. Yeah, none of that is handy. Okay, petal apothecary with four of the white petals. Um, yeah. We can go ahead and make one of those. I mean, there, there's no reason not to. Petal Apothecary. In order for a botanist to create a plant life that can do their bidding, they would need a special means of infusing plants with mystical energy. Luckily, the Petal Apothecary does just that. Petal Apothecary. This block, when placed in the world and given some water by use of a water bucket, will accept any mystical petals thrown at it, releasing their energies. Once one has inserted the correct petals... Throwing some seeds in will finalize the process. That's what we need seeds for. Tossing in a full bucket will also fill the apothecary with water. Quite a few plants can be made using this method. For more information, read the functional flora and generation flora sections of this lexicon. Shift right clicking the petal apothecary with an empty hand will remove the last item thrown in. Instead of water, one can place lava in this block. If that is done, it'll serve as a brazier and incinerator, destroying any items in that come in contact. Furthermore, tossing in vines also gives the block an overgrown visual. Comparators can detect whether the block has water or not. Since Petal Apothecary can be filled by usage of drops of water bucket, and dispensers can fill buckets, um, creating a system that can automatically refill the water in this dish shouldn't prove too difficult. A simple tip for those who want to squeeze the biggest efficiency out of every block is as it follows. Up to 20 seconds after crafting a flower, right-clicking the apothecary with an empty hand will pull another set of the same ingredients out of your inventory and put them into the apothecary for quick mass crafting. This only works if the apothecary's water is refilled. Ooh, that's weird. Okay, I didn't realize that was the case. Crafting the petal apothecary. That doesn't look like a recipe to me. Um, it's okay. We can just use uh, JEI. Okay, living rock for that. But we only have one more set of living wood to make. Yeah, we shouldn't do it out here because we're messing up the nice pretty grass. So yeah, let's bring it inside. <laughs> um... We might have room to do it down here, actually. If we break this layer. Of stairs and turn it into a floor. Oh, I've forgotten that we still have this overlay on. Oh my goodness. Yeah, cobblestone, we got cobblestone. Ain't a worry for us at all. <laughs> that is insane. We have way too much cobblestone. All right, pure daisy here. Pure daisy there. That'll be nice and pretty. We need to go get some dirt. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Thankfully, you do not need a uh, 
um, what should we call it, a grass block underneath it to do it. So now we can make the other pure daisy. And we'll do this one out in the Batania area outside here. Um, we need to actually do something smart. And bring this stuff out. Because we're going to be using a lot, a lot of water out here. So we're going to bring our water generation out here. All right. And it might be a good idea to go ahead and bring this fluid tank and set it down out here as well. Stick it there, actually. All right. I just heard this thing go off, so let's go grab it. I don't know why the there doesn't seem to want like a melon does not seem to want to grow there maybe it's a lighting thing actually that would kind of make sense wouldn't it um anyway let's grab an extra torch and see if that's what it is Maybe that'll fix it for us. Um, okay. What? That's... Somehow we got grass all the way down there. I'm confused as to how, but... Well, I'm sorry. You spawned in the wrong spot, bud. Die! Oh, man. I didn't want to do... Did not want to break that. Okay, cool. It's still turned on. All right. I am liking how this obsidian pickaxe is still around. There we go. All right. Back to what we were doing. Moving our water generation out. Um, into the oh we also need we need to continue harvesting the wheat because we have to use seeds and a lot of them so let me go grab a hoe we should leave the hoe down here in this chest anyway um, but yeah we're gonna have to use a lot a lot a lot a lot of seeds for Batania, so it's definitely a good thing to continue to harvest our wheat here. Um, and we're going to grab this stack of seeds to bring with us. We're going to go ahead and grab this vine, because I think that'd be kind of cool to put on the Petal Apothecary, just because I feel like it. You know, no particular reason. Um, but yeah. And then the last set of stone to be made. All right, now, um, next thing we're gonna do is to move the bonsai pot outside because it is a, how we make water is leaves, so we need everything to make water outside if we can help it. So that's what we're going to do. Is put it outside. And that way we have leaves to continually make water out here. And it's going to be nice and easy. Alright. <clears throat> Petal Apothecary. We have to finish our living rock we need the rest of this in... Oh yeah, it was a lighting thing, because now the canola's growing and the melon's already grown. 
Yeah, we need this to finish up so that we can um, use it for the Petal Apothecary. Alright, there we go. We bring good things to life. Alright, let's eat. Alright, the shim... Oh, we already read that claim. Okay, basic crafting. One of the forest mana pool mana spreader. Okay, I'll get that in a minute. Petal Apothecary. None of these other glowing flowers I'm collecting seem to share the magical properties of the flower that was already in the room. Perhaps if I combine petals in different combinations, I'll get a more interesting outcome. So, create the Petal Apothecary, which is simple enough. Um, I should, you know, go ahead and build ourselves. We have been using the same crafting station this entire time. We should build one out here. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Cobblestone slams. That's not how it goes. It was like this, wasn't it? And then we had a living rock in the middle and pedal on top. Yes. Usually, I'd have a water source underneath the Petal Apothecary, but obviously, um, you can't do that here because, well, infinite water sources don't work. It's annoyingly, but, you know, they don't, so we're stuck with, uh, what do we got? All right, and Petal Apothecary, we're going to stick it there. Water, let's toss a vine in. Look at that, that looks kind of funny. Kind of interesting, kind of interesting. All right, what do we got here? Um, to make another pure daisy... Four mystical white petals. Well, let's um, do this this way then. That was stupid. That's how we do it. And then we'll do that. All right. You need to remember how to do that. All right. Nice. Another pure daisy. But yeah, you see how easy it is to use water with this mod. Um, and how with the water being as uh, rare and difficult to get as it is in this mod pack, definitely something we need to keep an eye on. Um, so yeah. All right. We now have a uh, pure daisy. We need to drop. I actually want to bring a cobblestone chest um, up. So we're going to put that in there because I don't need it. And we're going to grab the small storage crate full of cobblestone. Oh, we're going to bring it out um, just so we can have it. Yeah, goodness. This thing is, because it's full, we're moving so slow with it. Um, so we're going to grab it, we're going to bring it, we're going to set it right there on top of our crafting table. Actually, no, I like being able to look at the crafting table, so we're going to set it right there on the other side. Okay, now we have plenty of cobblestone, plenty of everything else. All right, um, move these into here. I guess we could set up a fluid duct system to do that on our on its own, but... We could theoretically automate water if we wanted to, but it'll be okay. Um, actually, it might be a smart idea to automate water. How much can it hold? 16. So this can hold 16 buckets. This can hold 20. Yeah, yeah I don't know. All right. Regardless, let's move on to the next thing. Claim the experience. Back. Mana transformations. Runic altar. Okay. 
basic crafting. One of the forest mana pool and a mana spreader. Now it says, there are a few tools that keep coming up in the guidebook that I will certainly need. Alright, so... The Wand of the Forest. It just takes two, three living wood twigs and two... Um... Petals of any color, and we're going to use red. It's going to look red, because, you know, red is red, and it's great. All right. One of the forest, mana pool, which uses um, living rock in this shape. How does that look on there? That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay. And a mana spreader, which is that. She uses living wood, gold, and a flower, or I guess a mystical a petal of some kind. So thankfully we still have some gold. I suppose we could have made it in there, but we may as well just make it out here, because we can. Alright. Living wood and um, a petal. Yeah, a mana, mana spreader. Alright, claim another mana spreader. Back. Nice. And then we need some mana generation. So yeah, so we're going to have that. And we need to have this and that. You. There we go. All right. You're bound to that one so that anything this mana spreader gets, it puts it into here and then it goes into there. Alright, so now we can use this whole grassy area to build mana generation on, which would be the endo flame. So, endo flame. Good start for making some mana, but there are many other options outlined in your lexica. Okay, so endo flame. Let's use the lexica. Latania to find the endo flame. Do, 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 do. Generating flora, endo flame. The endo flame is a very rudimentary generating flower. It will absorb any combustible items or blocks dropped on the nearby vicinity, albeit only one at a time, and burn through them to generate mana while the fuel lasts. The amount of time it takes to burn through an item is roughly half the time a furnace would. There is a few small uh, caveats, though. The end of flame will not burn anything that returns a byproduct. An example are lava buckets. They have empty buckets as a byproduct. Furthermore, the flower can only hold fuel equivalent to that of four times a block of coal. If in any individual fuel with longer burn time than that is used, it won't be uh, put to full efficiency. As the end of flame is often a botanist's first foray into proper automatable active generating flora, it would be best to not leave it to manual usage forever. As the flower requires dropped items, an open crate, which you can find in the natural apparatus section, and some sort of limiting mechanism, a timer pressure plate, would be ideal for it. Um, okay, when arson becomes useful. Well, wow. alright, so we need two brown, a uh, light gray, and a red. Simple enough. I, I always have loved... Yeah, Direwolf20 said neat. Oh, that's great. I've always loved the way that they... Because you can see the stuff on the on the actual book over in our, in the corner over here. You know, the text. I, I always thought Lexica Botania was done very well. Um, so, okay. We need two brown, light gray, and uh, red, did it say? Yes. Okay, so we have a red. Um, we should be able to easily get the rest. Uh, just so you know, every time I want to do this, I'm going to take them and I'm going to, to duplicate them. Because I can, right? And that'll give us, you know... Petals, so yeah, we may as well, right? There's no reason not to duplicate it.
Gotta continue the water generation. Come on, man. Get your head in the game. Okay. A light gray. Red. Two brown. And seed. Endo flame. Bam. Claim two more endo flames, an overgrowth seed, and composite mana lens. Well, we're going to put the other two endo flames there. Let's go get something for them to burn. As we know, the strainer has things for them to burn. Coal. That's not how it works. I keep doing that, but it's okay. Okay. Um, here we go. There you go. That's what I want to see. Nice. Now we're getting some mana. As long as we don't accidentally pick that up. Okay. What does the overgrowth seed do? Let's look it up. Oh, we can do this. Or not. Well, let's see what it looks like in here. Um, no, 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 oh wait, we just looked at that, we just looked at that. Pasture seeds, overgrowth seed. What do you do? An overgrowth seed is an elusive item which can be used to enchant a piece of grass by right-clicking on it in the world, creating enchanted soil. Flowers that are rooted on this enchanted soil will function at double the normal speed. Oh, okay. There's one problem, though. No known method of creating these exists. They have, however, been allegedly spotted by historians in ancient structures and temples. Perhaps that would be a wise guess as to where to find these. Ooh, so they're very, very rare then. Um, we're not going to use that right now. <laughs> You're going to stay there. Um, composite mana lens. What did that say? Potency velocity. Okay, what do uh, the mana lenses do? In order to upgrade the potential, the potential, a mana spreader, one... I guess the potential of a mana spreader is what it meant. Um, one can apply mana lenses. The very basic mana lens does absolutely nothing. Lenses can be dyed in a workbench, all the 16 colors of the spectrum, or combined with a mana pearl to create a rainbow lens. These will change the color of the burst. The basic lens doesn't do anything. But lenses are not only for fancy colors. One can upgrade them with all sorts of materials to create new lenses, which can do all sorts of effects on the mana burst. It's to take in mind that if using a normal mana spreader, there needs to be a mana receiving block at the end for the burst to fire. A pulse mana spreader is recommended for some lenses. Sometimes, though, having a single mana lens in a spreader just isn't enough sometimes. Yeah, okay. Anyway, by combining two lenses with a slime ball and a crafting table, it's possible to unite them into one and keep the effects of both. The first lens used determines the visuals, texture, and color. It's, note, it's to note that some combinations will not work, nor will two lenses of the same type. The velocity lens will drastically increase the speed at which a mana burst travels, but not only does the beam start to lose a mana a lot faster, it can also carry a bit less. So we have a potency velocity lens. The potency lens will double the amount of mana a mana burst can carry. However, the beam becomes slower, and after it starts to lose mana, it does so at a lot faster rate. Okay, so basically right now, since we're only going literally one block, there is an absolutely no reason to... Um, Very low man in there. Um, there's absolutely no reason to use either of those. And we shouldn't put them in that chest. We should put them in something else. Um, 
Let's do this. Um, let's just make another chest. I don't know why I came back in here to do that. We have literally all of our wood right here. Uh, let's make a double. Oh, we can reach the chest, from, the wood from uh, this chest as well. That's kind of great. There we go. And we're going to set that over there. And we're going to put our Batania stuff in there. Okay. What does it want us to do next? Um, automation kit number seven. There are a plethora of options for automating mana production, but one easy but not lossless one is to get started with is using a simple pressure plate, open crate, and redstone to set up drop and set up to drop coal or charcoal to your endotherms. A hovering hourglass could also be used to trigger a dropper. Examples of this setup can be found online. Open crate, wooden pressure plate, redstone, oak wood slab, hopper. Wow. Um, um, okay, so the open crate... Oh, wait, so it's the hopper to make a dropper with. Is that what that's for? Is using an open crate and redstone to set up set up to drop coal or charcoal. Okay. So how does the open crate work? Let's look at that. Oh, we just hold control. That's interesting. Okay. Sometimes devices like droppers or dispensers aren't precise or fast enough. A simple solution is to make a crate and punch a hole in the bottom. Yeah, it's that simple. The open crate accepts items from hoppers or any other means of inserting items and obviously drops them directly below it. Depending on the situation, items can be inserted into the open crate with a hopper, hopper, hawk, or dropper. A little interesting effect the open crate can do is that when given a redstone signal, any items it drops are prevented from being caught by flowers like hopper hawk, uh, ranin carpus, or polydisiac for around 10 seconds more than usual. Oh, well. Um, okay then. Uh, let's, let's place that. No. There. We're going to stick a hop around it, and we'll put it there. I'm not going to use the redstone or the uh, or the other, right? Because it'll, it'll just drop it itself, right? So if I just stick something combustible in there, it'll just drop it, is what I'm hoping for. Let's use um, sticks, because we have a whole mess of sticks. Okay, so that just drops it then. So the point is, you're supposed to put... Um, let's wait till that gets done. Okay, let's move this back one here and put the pressure plate so I'm assuming what it wants you to do is put redstone and then build your way up right so I'm going to just use uh, cobblestone here. Um, I 
I don't want it to mess up the grass. So let's see, will that do it? If I drop one and then if I put that in there, no. It's not going to, oh, because we need to do that. So now if I put Yeah, there we go. So that's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I'm going to drop that in there, too, because I don't want it. So thank you. Oh, okay. Anyway, next step. <laughs> hmm. That's pretty nice. Ore, kids. Uh, make ore. Okay. I, at least I hope so. It will take a lot more than a few endoflames to power it, but you could set up an ore kid and use it to convert smooth stone into ores, though it will cost a lot of mana to make a lot of noise, or and make a lot of noise. Evolved Orchid. Okay. Um, I ain't really something we want to do right now. Oh, it consumes that and makes a floating one. Huh. Interesting. Um, do we really want to do that right now? I mean, I don't know that we really want to go straight to that. Uh, let's see how much it takes to make an Orchid. Um, orchid... Functional Flora, Evolved Orchid. You probably noticed by now that you won't be mining any ores in this world. Oh, really? <laughs> how does this, how does it know this? Okay. The Evolved Orchid will use mana to generate ores in nearby stone blocks at a faster and cheaper rate than the Orchid. The ores it generates are random, but seem to be blasted towards, or biased towards more common ores rather than rarer ores. So we need two gray, two red, two green, two um, yellow. Two gray, two red, two green, two yellow. Green, two gray, two red, two green, two yellow. Yellow, and then gray, which is over here, okay. Green, gray, yellow, bone meal, bone meal, bone meal, shoo, shoo, shoo. Bam, bam, bam. Um, I keep forgetting to do the whole water thing. And now we need to do. Here we go. All right, bucket, there we go. Two red, two gray, two yellow, two green seeds. Evolved Orchid. Detect, claim, back. We're not gonna use that right now at least. Maybe in the future, but not right now. All right. Um, Mana transformations, mana powder, mana diamond, mana steel ingot. Not gonna do that right now. <laughs> runic altar. Seems I shall need to make runes in order to advance further down this path, created by placing the required items on the runic altar and then providing it with mana from a mana spreader and a mana pool. Uh, it sparks with power when the process is complete, throwing on a piece of living rock and striking it with a wand of the forest finalizes the rune. Once created, runes can be used to create higher level runes, make more advanced flowers in the Petal Apothecary, or craft other magical apparatus. Ooh, we gotta do... We've got to create a runic altar and create all the rest, all of the runes. Um, so yeah, so I suppose... The ring of magnetization is not impossible because it's mana steel. Um, mana lens magnetizing. Mana lens, iron, and gold. So we need four, we need eight mana steel total. Which, of course, mana steel is what? Terra steel, um, mm, 
I guess mana pool. The mana pool is, simply put, a storage of mana. Mana can be inserted into uh, it by usage of a mana spreader, and any adjacent mana spreaders will pull mana from it to increase their internal buffer automatically. Any functional flowers require a nearby mana pool to draw power from. Mana pools come in two varieties, a weaker diluted variety, which only stores a very small amount of mana, and a normal variety, which can store as much as 100 times more than the diluted one. Whenever mana pool is referred elsewhere for scale, it refers to a normal one. Yeah, uh, we're not using the diluted, so... We don't need that for now. We'll cause them to get infused with mana, turning them into more powerful resources. Iron ingots. Fewer iron ingots or mana pearls. Um, so if we toss um, iron ingot or iron blocks into there, we get mana steel. So how much mana do we have in our mana pool? Not much. I would rather you not pull. It seems like this thing's pulling. I'm putting it into its internal buffer instead of sticking it in there. I might be hearing the blender. Um, my apologies for that. Um, let's do this. Uh, Hopefully, yeah, so, and then we're going to change where all this stuff is located. We're going to move it all to back here. There we go. No, 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 no. Come on. There we are. And then we're going to put all of this back here. So one, two, three should work just fine there. Um, we need to place, actually we'll do it over here. So that'll block the door for now, but that one, no, not cobblestone. I want to use the wooden one since he gave it to me. Um, There we go. That'll work just fine. Um, and now we need more stuff to send through it. To... Okay, more water to do. Thankfully, it only takes four leaves to do that. Um, let's just use some wood. Did not want to place that in there, thank you. Wanted to put it in there. I don't know how much mana it's losing, but... Oops. Hopefully it's not losing a crazy amount of mana. Um, I'm just looking and it's showing it's like 10 times zoom. Ow. Well, that's a lot less than I thought it was supposed to be, actually. Like, ten times zoom. <laughs> so, wait. So, if we hover over it... Ew! Well, that makes a lot more sense. I thought I'm like... I was looking at it, I'm like... 
that's a lot of mana, you know, if, if we're using all of these endo flames and we're barely getting anything that close, you know, I was like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? <laughs> you know, I was freaking out, but okay. Um, I suppose we've been about an hour. We're definitely not going to finish all of Batania today, so um, that's something for next episode, but yeah, um... Hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Um, we will continue our quest to complete the Botania section next episode. Um, metamorphic Tiger Stone Bricks. We can break that. Interesting. But there's nothing there. It's just for looks, I guess. I don't know. Um, I don't know exactly what all that's for. Um, but regardless, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Uh, definitely um, come back for the next one where we will continue more Botania. And hopefully eventually we'll get to do the rest of the other mods as well. Um, I'm wondering if we complete a certain section of this, we get to... Uh, get another pick of choice or something like that but um regardless um that's all we're gonna do for today we've done a little bit of a good setup here um it is annoying we're limited by the space so much but it's all right so i'm curious okay there's more stuff underneath there i was like is there something hidden uh, there might be who knows but uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next episode. This is me signing off, and I've been producing videos. Thanks for watching.